Hi, we're here to talk to you about Cosmic Address. Yeah! Wait, what? You know, like, Cosmic Address? Oh, like, 16 Skyview Terrace, Holliston, Massachusetts. No, 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 not your street address, your Cosmic Address. Oh, okay, like, four score and seven years ago. No, our... not our Gettysburg Address. Who are you, Abraham Lincoln? I'm talking about our cosmic address. I still don't get it. Okay. Well, your street address says where you are on planet Earth, right? Right. Well, our cosmic address says where we are in the whole universe. Whoa. Yeah. So we're here to teach all of you what exactly our cosmic address is. Cool. Yeah, pretty nice of us. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. So let's start with the first line. Earth. Earth. When talking about our cosmic address, it makes sense to start with where we're standing, Earth, the third planet from the Sun. Hopefully, you know a little bit about our planet already, but here's some additional information. This is what Earth is like when you're outside. Grass. Air. Animals. Water and stuff. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the fifth largest. 70% of Earth's surface is covered in water. We have one moon and an atmosphere that extends over 10,000 kilometers. Earth is currently the only planet we know of with life. And now, we thought we'd go to the general public and ask them what they think about our great planet. Hello, citizens of Earth. If you had to say your favorite thing about Earth, what would it be? Um, oh my gosh. I would say the natural, amazing things like the Grand Canyon, things like that. That's beautiful. And you? People. <laughs> that is a lovely sentiment from a lovely human. Excuse me. Okay. Can I ask you what your favorite thing about Earth is? My favorite thing about Earth? Um, nature. It's beauty. Just you can go outside and just be at peace. It's pretty. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Can I ask you what your favorite thing about Earth is? My favorite thing about the planet Earth? Yes, the planet Earth. People. If you can summarize Earth in one sentence, what would that sentence be? Wait, in one sentence? Yes. Uh, the entire planet in one sentence? Yes. Um, I think the planet Earth is full of many different, mm, different things. And what's your favorite thing of Earth? My favorite thing of Earth is all the nature. I love nature. It's, yeah. Good answer. If you could summarize Earth in one sentence, what would that sentence be? In one sentence? A sentence. I love the... With a period at the end. Well, that's how a sentence would be punctuated, yeah. yes. yes. Um, I love the planet Earth. And what is your favorite thing about planet Earth? Life. Thank you. What is your favorite thing about Earth? Insightful. If you had to summarize Earth in one sentence, what would that sentence be? It exists. And what is your favorite thing about this planet that exists? Squirrels. Thank you. You know, uh, my favorite thing about Earth is probably humans. And not to be, not to play the superior species card here, but I mean, really, if you look around how many weirdos there are, people, to me, are fascinating. I think we are the most interesting species. I think we're just, I mean, freaks. What would be your least favorite thing about Earth? Oh, jeez. Um... Justin Bieber? <laughs> least favorite thing about Earth? Probably, uh, hmm. I mean, let's see. All right, for starters, there's the ozone that's turning into a doily. Um, the melting icebergs, ice caps, polar ice caps, whatever. Probably all, all the crap that ensues from you know, from it being a planet. So all the, all the climate issues probably because I know there's just with the, with all of those in existence. There's this, 
there's this like constant sense of a pen of impending doom you know like a real apocalyptic type thing going on so that's probably my least favorite part but at the same time does it keep you on your toes yeah i get out of bed i'm like is today the day an asteroid is going to hit earth great points if you wish to know more about earth go outside of the cosmic address in which we survive. The solar system is the next region out, so let's take a moment and teach you about. It is much older than you or than I. 4.5 billion years is how long it's survived. What's it made of, you might want to know. Lots of things, I will tell you. All right, here we go. You've got nine big old planets, though one was demoted. But what about dwarf? Okay then, it's promoted. Many planets have moons, like Titan and Io. Can you see them through a telescope? I don't know. You can try though. Some are icy, others gassy, some are hot and some are rock. But if you think they're the only things, you're in for quite a shock. We've got two belts, not that keep up your pants, but the Kuiper and asteroid. Around the sun, they do dance and fill up the planetless void. The sun is the center of it all, says Copernicus. He made the current model up. Okay, it looks like this. Good evening, fellow astronomers. My name is Sunny Supernova, this is Dwarf Planet, and welcome to the Hubble Report. Tonight's news will focus on Earth's cosmic address and how our neighbors down the street, the local group, and the local supercluster fit into that. After stepping out of our home in the solar system, we face billions of other galaxies. And in considering 30 plus that are in our relative local group, we must first analyze their composition in relation to one another. The local group's neighborhood houses more than 30 galaxies, including dwarf galaxies, which are only composed of up to several billion stars in comparison to our galaxy that holds up to 200 to 400 billion stars. Its biggest components are spiral galaxies of the Milky Way and Andromeda. Next, we must consider how these galaxies move in relation to one another. According to Jeffrey Bennett, Megan Donahue, Nicholas Schneider, and Mark Boyd, some neighboring galaxies in the local group move towards us while some push away. However, it has been reported that two small, special galaxies, the large and small Magellanic Clouds, actually orbit our Milky Way galaxy, making us almost a sun stand-in in the nearest galaxies. In regards to speed, the astronomical author said the Milky Way galaxy travels at about 300,000 kilometers per hour towards Andromeda, our nearest neighboring galaxy. But regardless, the group reported that we shouldn't worry about colliding with Andromeda because that, my friends, won't occur for billions of years. Moving on, we reach the Virgo supercluster, otherwise known as the local supercluster. According to astronomer Edwin Hubble, virtually every galaxy out here is moving away from us. The farther the distance, the faster they race away. So essentially, the universe is expanding. And with this continuous expansion, astronomers state that there is no evident center of the universe. The local supercluster is composed of the local group and the Virgo cluster, and it is approximately 110 million light years in diameter. However, contrary to popular belief, astronomers believe the supercluster's large size does not make it unique. It is reported that it is only one of millions in the entire observable universe. That's all we have tonight at the Hubble Report. Thanks for tuning in and learning more about the Earth's cosmic address. I'm Dwarf Planet, and this is my co-host, Sunny Supernova. From all of us here in the studio, thank you for watching, and we hope you join us again tomorrow night for some more astronomical highlights.
wind down Welcome to the Space Jam Mars ain't the kind of place to raise your kids In fact, it's cold as hell Cosmic blast, you're giving me a technicolor world Putting me in overdrive, speed of light, I'm so alive Could you be my supernova girl? Slam now, we got a real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. Here's your chance, do your dance at the Space Jam. Huh?